Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, my name is Chris Bechik. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Development for Platinum Group Metals. Uh, we are a New York, Toronto listed developer of the Waterberg Project in South Africa. Uh, I will make a couple of uh, forward looking statements today. Uh, Waterberg is a tier one asset uh, based on the four pillars of uh, reserves, mine life, projected cost, and production. Uh, this asset was just discovered in 2011 and it's been through a full engineering and a final feasibility study. Currently, uh, reserve sitting just under 20 million ounces, 45-year uh, mine life with a uh, first quartile cost and uh, projected annual production in excess of 400,000 ounces per year. It's located in South Africa on what's known as the north limb of the Bushveld complex, uh, just north of Anglo's Mahalik Quinta mine and the Ivanhoe Platte Reef project. Um, it's part of a new generation of bulk mechanized projects in South Africa. It is palladium dominant with a very good gold and base metal credit. Um, and uh, the low cost comes from the bulk mechanized nature and the uh, multi-decline ramp shallow access. And the, the concentrate which we plan to uh, beneficiate in South Africa, uh, certainly amenable to existing uh, smelters in country. Uh, capital markets, uh, $200 million market cap US, um, currently, uh, no debt. We recently cleared our balance sheet. Um, we were carrying about $30 million of debt, which has been paid down. Major shareholders, uh, Hoskin Consolidated here in South Africa, Franklin Templeton, and the Copernic Fund out of Florida. The Pearl split for this project is quite unique uh, for the uh, South African platinum space. It's a palladium dominant ore body with 63% of the metal split being palladium. Platinum, uh, rhodium as well. Uh, gold at 6% is a, uh, uh, a, good, a good credit, which we plan to monetize through a potential stream financing later this year. Uh, there's been quite, of, quite a lot of discussion about the, the palladium market recently, given the geopolitics in Russia. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, Russia is, uh, represents about 38% of world's palladium production. And uh, recently the LPPM uh, suspended uh, a number of Russian refiners from, um, from its uh, good delivery list coming into London and Zurich. And we are seeing Western countries like the United States, uh, the UK, European and Japanese uh, purchasers now shunning Russian metal and uh, certainly incentivizing the development of our project. The commodity price has certainly been volatile based on our, on our, uh, on our basket of metals, uh, palladium being the main driver. Uh, the feasibility study that was published in 2019 had a uh, valuation price of a, just under $1,500. We're sitting uh, today over $2,000. And as you can see from the bottom there, the projected uh, cost to mine at Waterberg will be uh, just over $600 an ounce. So uh, certainly significant margin in, in the project. The ownership structure, uh, ourselves and our black empowerment partner uh, control the asset. Uh, indirectly, we own 50.02%. Impala Platinum, the, the large South African integrated producer, purchased 15% for $30 million a number of years ago. And the Japanese government through Jogmec and uh, their partner Hanwha um, are also significant partners. Hanwha has uh, metal marketing rights for the project and we're working closely with them um, on beneficiation. Uh, our mining right was granted in uh, 2020. As part of that process, we did a lot of work on ESG, engaging with the community, um, and our social and labor plan was approved as part of the mining right grant. Uh, recently, we worked through the Digby system out of the UK um, to get accredited in terms of our ESG work, and uh, we'll continue to do that going forward. Uh, given the, the mechanized capabilities of this project, there is a lot of room for training, employment, and infrastructure development to go along with, with the development. The ore body, uh, it's, it's, it's massive. Uh, currently, the strike length is uh, over 12 kilometers. The 20 million ounce reserve is sitting with an eight kilometer uh, envelope in what's known as the F zone. Uh, there are two layers stacked on top of each other and the mining widths range from two and a half meters to well over uh, almost 100 meters on the F zone. So this is a, uh, a, a really a large animal for, for South Africa and the widths are uh, um, very rare for this, uh, for this commodity. On a plan view basis, uh, this is again out of our feasibility study from 2019. Uh, you can see there's there's plan there for multiple decline access, uh, a full processing plant, and a uh, and a, and a tailings facility. Um, community uh, certainly uh, not a lot of density here and uh, very manageable, and but there will be a requirement to bring electricity and water to this area, 
and uh, that's all been included in our in our feasibility study. The mining method, most of you will know that the traditional platinum mines in South Africa are highly labor oriented. Uh, the uh, Marensky and UG2 layers are uh, um, extracted using conventional um, uh, jack leg mining. And uh, that tends to be very volatile, tends to be very expensive and very inflationary. Uh, Waterberg will be mined uh, sub-level long hole with paste backfill. And you can see the, the stock diagram there. We're looking at uh, up to 100 meter stopes. And um, you know the, the advantages here are safety, uh, bulk, bulk production, and, uh, and low operating cost. On a cost curve basis, this would be the second lowest cost producer in the PGM sector. Uh, that orange bar to the left is the Mahalaquena mine, which is the only uh, open pit project in, in South Africa. And so again, based on the scale and the, and the bulk capabilities, we think that uh, we can certainly come in slightly above the, the Mahalaquena open pit. A few highlights from the feasibility study, which was done by Stantec and published in 2019. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, just under 20 million ounces in reserve, 420,000 ounces of, of steady state annual production. Um, the, the capital cost is just over $600 million, and uh, we've been advancing that file quite aggressively. We have uh, plans to do a $300 million gold stream, which has now gone into definitive agreements, and that will be then uh, layered in with some equity and project debt. And uh, we expect to finalize that, uh, that package towards the end of this year, early into next year. And uh, you know, based on a 45 plus year mine life, uh, the ability for this project to, to spin out cash for a long time is certainly certainly viable. Um, just going back to productivity, uh, we are seeing the labor um, uh, negotiations beginning in, in South Africa with a number of the producers. And you can see there on the left-hand side in the, in the yellow dots, that's your productivity from the old Western Limb mines where you're getting three to five ounces per person per month in production. And again, it's all based on volume of people and uh, the ability to deliver uh, uh, ounces. Waterberg, uh, the Platte Reef, Mahalaquena, these are larger, thicker uh, projects. And uh, you're getting 30 to 40 ounces per person per month, which puts it on a more, on a more global scale in terms of productivity. Uh, one of the things we're working on, which will uh, unlock the project finance, is the uh, offtake for the project. Um, traditionally, junior companies in platinum have uh, sold uh, concentrate to the existing smelters, and we're working on, uh, on getting that uh, done possibly. The other uh, avenue is to actually build our own smelter and base metal refinery, and we're completing a feasibility study right now to look at the costs and the economics of doing that, and that's something we'll be able to talk about uh, later, later this year. The timeline for the project, uh, it's, a, it's an approximately eight to 10 year construction before you're actually in, in steady state commercial production. Um, the feasibility is done, which we may, we may update later this year. And we have our mining license granted uh, uh, last year from the DMR. Um, so certainly uh, these projects take a lot of time, but um, once we're in, in full production with over 400,000 ounces uh, of, of PGMs being uh, produced, it, it, it certainly will, uh, will, will will generate a ton of cash. Um, lastly, uh, we are investing in a battery business with Anglo-American. Uh, we have um, discovered some interesting science uh, uh, where PGMs are being positioned in traditional lithium ion batteries. So uh, NMC, NCA, lithium iron phosphate, um, we're seeing improved performance in those batteries. And uh, the real focus is on next generation batteries, lithium sulfur, lithium air, um, and where you have a chemical reaction taking place and the catalytic properties of those PGMs are, are uh, highly beneficial to things like cyclability and, and energy density. Um, so Anglo is quite excited about this. Um, they're funding 50-50 uh, with us. And uh, we've assembled quite a long um, uh, patent portfolio and we expect to update the market on, on this particular project in the near future. So just a quick summary. Uh, again, this is, a, this is a significant tier one mining asset. Um, low cost, uh, bulk mechanized, high productivity. Um, we are looking at offtake beneficiation at this point, which is key to the project. And we expect to uh, update the market on both financing, offtake, and a construction decision later this year, or early into 2023. Thanks very much.